Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this new video series, we are going to take a look at levels of detail in Unreal Engine. Okay, so let's get to it. In this video, we are going to talk about level of detail, which is in short LOD. When we talk about it, we usually refer to it by the abbreviation. So in this case, we would say LODs. And what do they mean and why are they so important when we are using real-time renderers? Well, usually it is going to show a higher detail mesh when the player is close to an object, like for example, the camera of the player will be close to this plant and you will see a higher detail mesh, but as you get farther away, the mesh is going to be simplified in a non-intrusive way, so you will not see the switch ideally. And then as you get farther away, it will be simpler and simpler. So you would start at LOD zero with a higher detail mesh. As you get far away, you would jump to LOD one with a lower detail mesh and then LOD two with an even lower detail mesh. So you go from close to far away and you will switch LODs according to that. So in UE, you have this system in place, which will do it automatically for you, which is quite nice. So that's what we call levels of detail or LODs. How does Unreal calculate how to simplify the, the mesh? Because we not only have a system to switch LODs automatically, but to also calculate them. So it does this using quadratic mesh simplification, okay? So what does this mean? It's going to try to get rid of edges that do not impact the visual quality in the mesh. So in this case, you can see here that we are targeting this edge right here. We are going to get rid of it. So we are going to need to place a new vertex and we are going to displace the existing vertices if needed to get less polygons. So here you would see where the system is trying to place the new vertex and this is going to be removed. And then this is the result, the final result, which as you can see has less vertices and also less edges. So you can see that the algorithm has recalculated how the polygons need to arrange in order to have a less detailed mesh, but trying to keep the highest quality possible. Okay, so now we are wondering what needs LODs in Unreal Engine. So it's quite simple. You can probably guess that static meshes for sure. You can probably guess also that skeletal meshes, especially crowds, if you are trying to do procedural crowds or something like that, a game that has a lot of um, NPCs or, or things like that, you are going to need LODs for the skeletal meshes also. But some people may think that since we have Nanite, no longer all of this applies. That's a mistake. Even if you have Nanite, which in theory deals with the levels of detail automatically for us, you're going to see that for some cases, which I, I have highlighted here, for example, Nanite does not support skeletal meshes. So in this case, Nanite cannot help us. We need levels of detail. And also, even if, if we have Nanite activated, for example, for static meshes, and we have converted the meshes to Nanite meshes, Sometimes you will also need LODs. For example, for unsupported platforms, which do not support Nanite, you are going to need to have some kind of, of fallback, fallback mesh. Thankfully, Nanite has an option, which is a fallback mesh, but it does not have a lot of control. So you may want more control than 
that option gives you. And also you may want when you use the fallback mesh to have multiple LODs. And the fallback meshes only support one LOD. You can choose the simplification amount, but you only have one LOD. So in that case, if you want more control, you may want to import your own LODs even when you are using Nanite. Not only when you have unsupported platforms, but also if you are using ray tracing, for example, in the reflections, you need the fallback mesh. So in that case, you may want control over the LODs and having LODs can give you that control over the ray tracing reflections, for example. You can also uh, be keen on having, having some light baking because you don't have lumen. So in that case, you will also need um, LODs. So as you can see, having nanite is no excuse for not having LODs. You are going to need LODs anyways. Nanite simplifies a lot of things, but just remember that you also need LODs if you want more control. You need to take into account that the unsupported platforms may, may be draw call limited because they are probably not uh, prepared to deal with as many as much geometry as Nanite has. So careful with that. So there is one more point that we have here, the complex collision. So in that case, you need to take into account that there are two types of collisions that you can choose, either simple collision, which uses rigid bodies to simplify the collisions, the calculation, and also the complex collisions. This is important, for example, to not uh, go through stuff in a level and things like that. So the complex collisions are quite costly. And in this case, you have an option to use an LOD, a level of detail for the complex collision instead of the base mesh. So the level of detail with the most uh, detail. And this can be quite useful if you have lots of collisions or lots of traces. So just bear in mind that for this, you also need to have LODs. So as you can see, LODs may seem ad outdated and deprecated, but they are far from it. So we know the what, but why do we need LODs? Quite simple. There are two benefits, two main benefits. One of them is performance. It They are really, really important for performance. You avoid overdraw, which in a deferred render is not as important, but if you can avoid it, you are you will be better off. And also draw calls because with a lot of geometry, you have more draw calls and even the LODs can simplify the number of materials in a mesh. So in terms of draw calls, you are going to save a lot also. But uh, some people may not think that in, it improves quality, but think about it this way. If you save performance thanks to the LODs in things that do not need detail, you can gain performance in things in things that do need detail and that you have close up and will be better because you will not have as much of a performance hit in items that are far farther away and do not need quality. So in terms of quality, you also get benefits because you will have more resources available to you to draw properly things that are close to camera. So you will get higher detail close to camera than you would otherwise. So this is really important. It's not only about performance, it's about quality also. Okay, and last but not least, I cannot stress enough, deal with this early in your prototype, early in your game, because this is one of the most important problems that I find with all of my students. They come to me, their uh, level is running at 15 frames per second, and they say, what do we do? And the first thing that I check always, and it's always not used, are levels of detail. And you can get speed ups 
that are quite uh, quite big, like for example, 20, 30 FPS extra, especially with foliage. So if you deal with this early on, it's going to be really easy and you are not going to have uh, performance problems and you just need to think about this from the first moment onward. So just remember to start creating levels of detail either outside of Unreal or in Unreal with the automatic generation tool. But do not forget about this because it's going to bite you later. Well, as you can see, levels of detail are far from dead in Unreal Engine. If you want to keep on learning and keep on knowing how levels of detail work in Unreal Engine, go ahead and watch the next videos in the playlist. If you have liked the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. We'll see each other in the next videos.